All right, I'm going to do some examples in this video of graphs. Oh, let me get a white one. We're going to do graphs of sine and cosine. I'll probably bounce back and forth between sine and cosine, and I hope that you guys know the basics of the functions. But let's start with an example. Y is equal to 5 times sine of x minus 3. Okay, now more than likely your instructor is going to want you to be able to tell her or him what the amplitude is, what the period is for any function, what if, whether we have a phase shift or not, whether we have a VS vertical shift or not, whether we have a reflection or not, and not only do that, tell them also the key points and then graph the function. You're going to need to be able to do all of these things. So let's start with the amplitude. The amplitude in this case is 5. It's always equal to the positive version of the coefficient of the function. So in this case, 5. And the amplitude is always the distance from the center of the function to the top or to the bottom. The period. The period is always 2 pi over b. And, oh, not 24. 2 pi over b. And in this case, <clears throat> b is equal to 1. Right? B is always the coefficient of x, in this case, 1. So 2 pi divided by 1 is 2 pi. So there's not really much of a period change from the basic sine wave. What is a phase shift? A phase shift is a horizontal shift. In this case, there is no phase shift. How do I know? Because there's nothing being added or subtracted to x inside the parentheses. Okay? Inside the parentheses. This minus 3 outside and after the function tells me that there's a vertical shift. And if it's minus, it's a vertical shift down 3 units. Down 3 units from the x-axis. Is there a reflection? There is no reflection because this coefficient is not negative. So if the coefficient here is negative, then that only indicates that there's a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, the amplitude is always the positive version of this. The period is always 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x. The phase shift is always taken from something dealing with x. There's nothing here in front or after x, so we don't have a phase shift. And this minus 3 after the function tells me there's a vertical shift, and I'm going down because it's minus 3 units. Again, there's no reflection because there's no negative in front. Now, with your key points, what I like to do is I'm going to, sh some, some of you will be able to go straight to the graph, but I'm going to show you the key points. We're going to find the, um, the actual ordered pairs of the key points. We'll start without the vertical shift, and then we'll do it with the vertical shift, just to make it easier, okay? And then hopefully later on you'll be able to do it straight into the vertical shift. Now for a sine wave, we know that it looks like this, like the snake. So it goes from an intercept to a max, back to an intercept, down to a min, and then back to an intercept. Running out of space. Intercept, max, intercept, min, intercept. Now let's find the ordered pairs that correspond to these key points. Now, let's start with the x coordinates. The x coordinates are always going to start where the phase shift is. Is. If there is no phase shift, then the first x-coordinate is 0. How do I know how to count to go from one x-coordinate to the next? Well, if you notice, these key points, they cut the function into 1, 2, 3, 4 pieces. So if I want what I call the distance between the key points, If I want the distance between the key points, I'm going to take the period, which is one full cycle, and divide by 4. Cut it into 4 pieces. So the period in this case is 2 pi. Cut it into 4 pieces simplifies into a pi over 2. So I'm going to count by pi over 2, and the distance between each of these x-coordinates will be pi over 2. So 0 plus pi over 2 is pi over 2. So the second x-coordinate is pi over 2. Pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2, or pi. 2 pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. I'm running out of space. 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 4 pi over 2, or 2 pi. I don't know if you can read that. Okay. Now, 
Here's a quick check to make sure you did this properly. If I take the last x-coordinate and subtract the first x-coordinate, in this case 2 pi minus 0, it should match my period, which is 2 pi. Now let's deal with the y-coordinates. All the intercepts without a vertical shift will be at 0, basically on the x-axis. The maximum y-coordinate will occur where the amplitude is, at 5, so positive 5. The minimum will occur at the negative version of the amplitude, so in this case, negative 5. Now again, this is um, without, like I said, without the vertical shift. Now I'm going to look at it with the vertical shift, and the um, x-coordinates are not going to change because a vertical shift is only affecting a y-coordinate, so I'm not going to redo these. These are the same as what they are here. Vertical shift, we said, was down three units. Mm -hmm. Down three units. So if I'm going down three units from the x-axis, then I'm going to subtract three from all of these y-coordinates. So zero minus three is negative three. Five minus three is two. Zero minus three is negative three. Negative five minus three is negative eight. And zero minus three is negative three. <laughs> And now I have all of my points to graph on my graph. So let's set up our graph here. That is crooked. All right, let's set up our graph. Make sure that you label your x-axis, your y-axis, Make sure you label everything. On the y-axis, we're just going to count by ones. That's easy. So this is 2 and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. On my x-axis, how do I know how to count? So remember before, we found what we called the distance between key points. This over here, pi over 2. This distance between key points, this pi over 2, is how we're going to count on the horizontal axis. So <clears throat> we're going to count by pi over 2. So my first value here is going to be pi over 2. Now, if you're not good with pi's and they scare you, deal with the fractions. This is 1 half. 1 half plus 1 half is 2 halves. 2 halves is 1, 1 pi. 2 halves plus 1 half is 3 halves. Put the pi next to it. 4 halves is 2, put the pi next to it. 5 halves, pi. 6 halves is 3, pi. 7 halves, pi. 8 halves, which is 4, pi. Right? It makes it a little bit easier if you ignore the pi for a second and deal with just the fractions. All right. And then maybe I'll extend this further to show you a few periods when we graph this. Your teacher's probably going to want you to do at least two full periods. All right, now <clears throat> we already have the points that we need, so let's just graph them. The first point happens at 0, negative 3. So on my graph, I'm going to go and plot 0, negative 3. The next ordered pair that I have is a pi over 2, 2. Pi over 2 is here. 2 is up here. Pi over 2, 2. The next ordered pair is at a pi negative 3. Pi negative 3, here. The next ordered pair is at a 3 pi over 2, negative 8. 3 pi over 2, negative 8. I want to make sure this is looking like it's supposed to look. Actually, I need to extend this down. 3 pi over 2, negative 8 down here. The next um, ordered pair is at a 2 pi negative 3. 2 pi negative 3. Now if you notice, if I connect these points, right, I'm going up, I'm coming back down to a min, and then I'm going back up to a intercept, you notice that it's a sine wave. It looks like a sine wave. Sometimes what I do is, you see the vertical shift down 3? Sometimes I put a horizontal dotted line where that vertical shift is, in this case it was at negative 3, 
right? If you look ahead, it was at negative three, went down three. If I put a horizontal line at negative three, it shows that now the center of the graph is along that new line instead of at the x-axis. I'm gonna verify really quick to make sure that everything else matches. What is my amplitude? My amplitude from the top to the center. So that distance is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five units. We said that the amplitude was five, so that distance should be five. Same thing as the distance from the center to the bottom should be five. One, two, three, four, five. That matches. So far the amplitude is good, we see the vertical shift. What about the period? From start to finish, one cycle from zero to two pi, it occurs in two pi radians. That full cycle from intercept to max to intercept to min to intercept. One full cycle occurs in two pi radians. That matches what we said earlier. One full period, one full cycle occurs in two pi radians. You wanna make sure that everything that you have here matches what your graph shows. Again, your instructor, your professor is going to want more than likely at least two full revolutions. So you want to be able to give them at least two full revolutions. At least two full cycles. So you can extend it either to the right more or to the left. Now of course this is going to keep going up and down, up and down, up and down. So from here what I would do is go to the next um, you know, a value along the x-axis and go from the intercept back to a maximum. At the next value on the, on the x-axis, we're going to go back to an intercept. At the next one, we're going to go down to a min. The next one, we're going to go back to a intercept. And if I continue to draw this curve, right, it's going to just, of course, figure not <laughs> perfect, keep going that way. If I want to do it to the left, I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So from the intercept, I'm going to go here to the next x value down to a min then at the next one back to a intercept here a max then back to a intercept so here's another full cycle okay so now this one shows three full periods and again your professor your teacher is going to want to see probably at least two here's three I personally do not care if my students show me the next period to the right of the main cycle or to the left, but you need to know at least how to show two. So this is the graph of the first function, y equals five, five sine of x minus three, and we only had an amplitude change and a um, vertical shift down three units. So this is our first example. I'm gonna do one more um, on this. I'll do another video showing more difficult cases, but let's do a cosine function, because we did a sine function. Okay, and I'll show you the difference between the two. Okay, y equals negative three times cosine. Let me do a couple things here. Let's do four x plus two. Okay, so now I have a couple of more transformations to this cosine function than in the last example, that sine wave. But I still wanna know the same stuff, amplitude, period, I'm gonna put this here, the distance between the key points, distance between key points. I want to know um, if there's a phase shift and what it is, if there is one. I wanna know the VS vertical shift, if there is one. I wanna know if there is a reflection, and if there is, what it affects. Let's start with the amplitude. Again, the amplitude is the positive version of the coefficient of the function. So if it's negative three, the amplitude will be positive three. Always the positive version of that coefficient in front of the function. So again, positive three. What about my period? My period is always two pi divided by the coefficient of x. And in this case, there is a coefficient of x. It is four, two pi over four or pi over two is my period. Now one full cycle occurs in pi over two radians. Very small. Distance between key points we said was, what are we doing? We're taking the period and we're cutting it into four pieces. So if the period is pi over two, I gotta take pi over two and divide it by four. I could represent it like this as the fraction or the division of two separate oops, fractions, that's a four. Let me change that. 
okay? So a pi over 2 divided by 4 over 1 is a pi over 2 times 1 over 4, or pi over 8. Do I have a phase shift? Well, there's nothing being added or subtracted to x, or to, you know, the x term here inside the parentheses, so there is no phase shift. Is there a vertical shift? Well, I'm adding 2 after the function, so therefore there is a vertical shift up 2 units. Is there a reflection? There's a negative in front of the coefficient, so yes, there's a reflection over the x-axis, okay? Now, again, your teacher is going to want to know all this information, and also, they're going to want to know the key points to the main part of the curve, right? Either you could do it separate like this, or you could put them straight on your graph, okay? And we'll refer back. I'm going to do it again without the vertical shift. Then I'll do it with the vertical shift, just to show you how easy it is to deal with the vertical shift. But my key points are going to change because now it's a cosine function. And if you remember a cosine function, it looks like a U, right, where this is the center of the curve. So it's going to go high, mid, low, mid, high. So the key points for a cosine function go from maximum to intercept to minimum to intercept back to maximum to create that U shape. Those are the key points. It goes max, intercept, min, intercept, max to create that cosine function. Now, here's the way that I'm going to take care of the reflection. If there's a reflection across the x-axis, then the mins become maxes and the maxes become mins because they're flipped across the center of that function. So I'm going to take care of that um, reflection. Remember we said we had a reflection, right? because of the negative in front of the function, I'm going to take care of that by making, at this point in time, my maxes, mins, my mins, maxes. My maxes, all mins, and my mins, maxes. That's going to take care of that reflection, and I don't have to think about it anymore. And now everything else is basically the same <clears throat> as what we did in the previous example. So... Let's create our ordered pairs for each of these key points. And let's start with the x-coordinates. I want you to think about the x-coordinates. Where do we start? Well, to determine the first x-coordinate, I'm going to look at the phase shift. If there is a phase shift, then the first x-coordinate is that phase shift. But in this case, there is no phase shift. So the first x-coordinate is simply zero. Remember, a phase shift is the same thing as a horizontal shift. So if I'm not moving it to the left or right, then it's starting at x equals zero. To get to the next x-coordinate, I'm going to look at the distance between key points, that pi over 8. So between each of my x-coordinates is pi over 8. So, to get to the next x-coordinate, I'm going to take 0 and add to that pi over 8, which is going to give me pi over 8. I'm going to take this pi over 8. Ooh, sorry, guys. I'm going to take this pi over 8 and add to that another pi over 8. Let me write this in. And if you're not good with pi, 1 eighth plus 1 eighth is 2 eighths. 2 eighths is 1 fourth, pi over 4. 2 eighths plus 1 eighths is 3 eighths, or 3 pi over 8. 3 eighths plus 1 eighth is 1 half, 4 eighths, or 1 half, or pi over 2. The distance from the start to finish is pi over 2 radians, right? I go pi over 2 minus 0. That distance between the last x-coordinate and the first x-coordinate is pi over 2. We said that the period was pi over 2. It should match that. That's a quick check to make sure I did these properly. And so far, so good. Now, if I'm dealing with the y-coordinates without the vertical shift, all the intercepts have a 0 for that y-coordinate because it would technically be along the x-axis, that center. Let's do the mins. What was my amplitude? Well, let's see. The amplitude we said was 3. So the minimum um, y-coordinates without the vertical shift would go down to negative 3. Negative 3. 
negative 3. What about the maximum y-coordinate? Well, if the amplitude is 3, then the maximum would be positive 3. Now, this is without the vertical shift. Again, making it very simple, I'll deal without it, and then I'll deal with it just to kind of like think about one piece at a time. Again, a vertical shift does not affect an x-coordinate, so those are going to stay the same. It's going to affect the y-coordinates. Now, what was our vertical shift? We said that our vertical shift was up two units, adding two. So that center is now being shifted up two units, which means that I'm adding two, up two units. I'm going to add two to all of these y-coordinates. Negative three plus two is negative one. Zero plus two is two. Three plus two is five. 0 plus 2 is 2, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Okay, so now we have all of our ordered pairs that we need with the vertical shift. We dealt with our reflection. We have our x-coordinates. Now let's go to our graph. Okay, so let's set it up. So we have a y-axis and we have a x-axis. Let me get nice and big. Label your x-axis, label your y-axis. Okay, the y-axis is a little bit easier. We'll just count by ones. All right, two, four, okay. count by ones. Negative two, negative four, and again, up negative six. Like I said before, I do like to put, I might need more of a y-axis up here. So let's add to that. Let's go up a little bit more. Okay, now <clears throat> let's look at how to count on our x-axis. Where do I look to determine how to count on my x-axis? I look at the distance between key points, pi over 8. So we're going to count by pi over 8 on the x-axis. So let me put my little tick marks first. So let's just think pi over 8 or 1 over 8 and then stick a pi next to it. So 1 over 8, pi over 8. 2 over 8 is 1 fourth, pi over 4. 3 over 8, 4 over 8 or 1 half, pi over 2. 5 over 8 can't simplify, stick a pi next to it. 6 over 8 is 3 half, 6, 8, 3 fourths, sorry about that. 6 over 8 is 3 fourths, stick a pi next to it. 6 over 8, 7 over 8, 8 over 8, right? And then of course in the negative direction is negative pi over 8, and then blah, 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 it keeps going the same way in the negative direction, okay? Now, what was my vertical shift? Up to units. So what I'm gonna do to make my life a little bit easier is I'm gonna put a little horizontal line at two to indicate that the new center of this curve is at two. Now let's look at our points. First point is at zero, negative one. Let's draw that. Zero, negative one is here. Our next point is at pi over eight, two. Pi over eight, two. Pi over eight, two. Our next point should be at pi over four. Let's see. Go to it. Pi over four, five. Pi over four. Five. Now I can continue this if I want to without looking at my points because the next one should be at 3 pi over 8 back at the intercept and the last one should be pi over 2 down to the minimum which is negative 1. So when I connect these points it should look like an upside down U. And it does. Regular cosine function, right? It looks like a U. If I reflect it over the x-axis it's flipping that upside down so it looks like it's supposed to I have a vertical shift up two, so the center's at two. The distance between the mid, um, the, the middle of it, and the high point, the maximum, this distance, is one to three units. The distance from the middle to the min is three units, one to 
three. So it matches what we said with the amplitude. And we want to check that. My full cycle occurs in pi over two radians from zero to pi over two, pi over two radians. And everything that we stated in our list here is shown. Now again, like I said, your instructor, your professor is going to want you to do at least two full cycles. So I'm going to have to continue to, to another full cycle, either to the right or to the left. So if I want to go to the right, then I'm going to go to the next um, x value along the x-axis, back to an intercept, to the next one up to a max, the next one back to an intercept, and then the last one back to a min and connect those. If I want to move to the left, I go in the opposite direction. So now again, this is a min. So I'm going to go up to an intercept, then to a max, back to a intercept, and then last but not least, to a min again. And it's going to keep going forever and ever in both directions, okay, in the same fashion, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, now if you notice that the cosine function and the sine function that we did, you know, they both go up and down, up and down, don't they? How do I know which one is cosine and which one is sine? I mean, in reality, every sine wave could be represented as a cosine function dependent on what portion of it you look at as the main cycle. And every cosine function should be represented or could be represented as a sine wave dependent on which portion of the function you are focused on. Again, I would suggest go through these again. I'm going to do another video to do a little more complicated examples dealing with phase shifts. And I'll do a couple with all the transformations that you might see. <clears throat> but get this down first, and then everything else. Follow the same steps every time, and it becomes a lot simpler. Good luck, guys. Make sure you subscribe. <clears throat> Click that subscribe button.